Welcome back for part two of the model rocket launch controller. I wanted to uh, share a few things with you before we got into the PCB design. Um, so let's let's take a look at a couple of these things. Uh, if we look at the schematic, you will see that we are basically pumping. Let's see here. All of the current right here, 14.8 volts. That's fully charged on those 18650s through the RCA plug, which has you know ground on the outside, uh, positive on the inside, out to the clips, which is going to uh, ignite the igniter. And typically what I have seen in testing and doing some research is that we're going to see between about 2 and 3 amps. And you can see that I have a question on here. So if we look at the schematic, well, it's not wanting to drag over. That's weird. Let's do it this way. Uh, you can see, do I need a, a current limiter? And I've played with one and without one. So that's something, um, personally, I'm, I'm trying to send as much current to that igniter as possible. There's a number of rocket engine types, and there's a great paper written by Robert uh, Brody in 2000. I'll include a link to this. And he does a number of tests with different types of engines and how much current they need. Now, the real trick with these engines is being able to do a continuity test without firing the rocket. And that really comes down to a much lower current. Also, uh, in the links, I will include this, uh, a little document from Estes, which is a manufacturer of rockets, engines, all that kind of stuff. And you'll see where they talk about in their design, they're putting, uh, it looks like 99 milliamps um, into the rocket to determine continuity. It says this current is not sufficient to heat the igniter enough to cause ignition, but is adequate to light the pilot bulb. This is in their little handheld device. So knowing that, I actually, in my design for current, there is a 33 ohm resistor. So basically what happens is, is the nano puts 5 volts on this line, you get 33 uh, ohms of resistance here, and it goes out to a continuity test, and then we check the voltage at this point, and we can determine whether we have continuity or not. If we take a look, let's pull up a calculator. Let me go back and pull up a calculator. If we pull up a calculator and we take, use Ohm's law, and we say, let's say we have 14.8 volts, and we're gonna divide it by 330 ohms, we get 44.8 milliamps. So I am well below that established STAS number of whatever was 99 milliamps. So that's part of this safety. Now, something else to keep in mind when you design something like this, and, and if you're like me, I, I'm not a model rocket guy. I have a friend who asked for this is to go off and besides your requirements look at if there's look at other products or look at um, if there's any safety standards and there actually is there is the um, NAR National Association of Rocketry and they have safety codes and one of the things that I've seen on some other uh, rocket launchers um, is is the absence of a safety button and that's actually a requirement if you notice watch what this says right here um, my launch system will have a safety interlock in series with the launch switch so that means that the safety button or how you do the safety and then press the button the launch button should be in series now technically and, and this is kind of one of those legality kind of arguments. Mine's not in series. You can see right here we have the, this is the safety, and they, are, they go to connectors. And then programmatically, inside the code, which, which we'll look at at some point here, the software looks at the safety to make sure it's been pressed after it's done a number of other checks, including continuity that's when it starts to strobe and make the launch button active. 
So the series nature of it is actually in the code, not in the wiring. So I'm not certain if that meets their definition or not, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I just think it's interesting that you look at these organizations and you try to determine what's your best practices. So I've tried to implement those best practices. All right, so with that, we're going to um, look at creating the PCB. I'm not gonna teach you how to create a PCB in, in KiCad. There's tons of videos online about that. What I wanna do is um, I wanna show you if we go to, here we go. So this is the board. And what you do is you, you know you, you got your schematic, you tell it what the parts are, and then you come into this tool, you lay out all the parts onto a board, and from that you then do some checks and at some point here you get it manufactured, which is what I've done. Um, hardest part about making a PCB was really just laying the parts out once you have the design, laying them out so that you get the tracks correct. And then you route the tracks from one pin to another. It actually shows you, and I'll show you in a second, um, what it looks like. It's, they're called rat's nests. So when you come into this, the system knows all the connections. You then lay them out correctly however you think is best. This is a two-layer board, meaning that there's going to be traces on the top and on the bottom. I also made a ground plane on the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. One of the neat things about KiCad is you can do this 3D view. And it comes up and shows you the board itself. It is currently in a ray trace mode. I'm going to turn that off for speed. So this is the actual board. And you can actually rotate it and look at it. So you can see how I've laid it out. There's our Nano. This is where the um, relays are going to go. There's our MOSFETs. This is the um, LM7805. We're going to use for voltage regulation, which you could replace with a um, pin-compatible uh, switching uh, regulator, a uh, buck converter. There's the DF Mini, and then you can kind of look at the board, and you can kind of look at heights and things like that. You can flip the board over. You see the ground plane, and you see some traces that had to be made. So in terms of talking about traces, I got to be honest. Some people really like routing boards. I don't. If it's small, it's no big deal. I actually used an auto router, which some people think is a big no-no. Auto routers are used in the industry all the time because of the complexity of the boards. They are multi-layer boards, so instead of just being one on top, one on the bottom, you know, you can have you have sandwiched layers in the middle, and there can be a lot of them. So computers are typically used to, to do routing, and that's called auto routing. And there is a, a free one called free router or free routing, and that's actually what I use. I'm going to show it to you. So let's see how I can do this. I don't really want to lose what I have, and I shouldn't. I think I made a copy of this. Yes, I did. So let's, let's do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the traces. We're going to delete all the traces. So, so that is the rat's nest. You can see how everything just changed. Now, what I want to do, and, and you can pick things up and you can move them around. And let's, Like if we were to pick this up and try to move it, you'll see boom, boom. See how they, they're rubber banded onto it. Okay. So I'm going to cancel that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this to a spectra file, which we've already done. And then I'm going to go over and, oh, I don't seem to have it open. So let me open it. I'm going to open, wow, I got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, I don't see it. So let me find it. I think my uh, recorder is turning things off. So if I go to uh, I think it's I apologize for having to search for this. 
Um, normally there's a window on my desktop. Let me see if it'll show me my desktop. Yeah, of course it will. So there we go. So here's the free router. It's, it's a Java application, a jar file. So what you do is you bring up the free router and um, you find where you've got your file at. So unfortunately it doesn't remember where we last did this. I got it in Dropbox, Electronic Projects, Projects, Controller for YouTube. Okay, there we go. Now what it does is it reads in that file, so see it knows all of the tracks as well. And now what we do is we tell it to start auto routing. And look what it does. It goes through, it makes multiple passes, and it's trying things multiple times. It's changing it. You can notice the V account increased and then decreased. Um, so it's basically figuring out shortest route. Uh, actually, there's a number of settings in an auto router, but I think this one might be shortest route or or least number of vias, something like that. And it's gonna go through, and actually it's pretty quick for this board, this is an easy board. You tell it how many layers it is, it actually knows that from the spectra file. Um, and it's gonna go out and it'll, it'll probably be done here any minute. In fact, it's done, that's it. Then what you do is you actually save this. And close it. It asks, are you sure you want to close? Yes. And then you go back into here and you say import the Spectra session. There it is. And then it sh see, look at that, all the routes. Now, in my case, some of you who are really paying attention are going to notice, hey, some of those routes, those traces, that's what they're called, aren't the same size. And that's true. Some of them are not the same size. That's because afterwards, um, I manually change the size of some of them. There's a couple ways to do that. You can create nets in the schematic editor and then have the, and associate the size of the track with the nets, which is really the right way to do it. In this case, I just did it after the fact because it was only a few. So let me actually close this without saving it. And then let me open it again. So we get the original one, that's the original one. And you can see these are thicker. Why are they thicker? Well, uh, KiCad has a calculator. I went in, said this is how much current I think I can see on certain traces because of the launch. And it said, well, you know, you should make them this big and I made them even a little bit bigger. And there you go. So the thick traces basically are carrying the 14.8 volt current, which can be high for the launch. And then the small traces are carrying the five volts uh, to run all the electronics. All right, so that's basically how you do the PCB. Okay, with that, let me show you the next step, which was creating Gerber files. Now, Gerber files are needed for manufacturing, and it's really easy. In fact, I use JLC PCB. Uh, let's use a different browser, because I know... There we go, we'll use that one. JLCPCB. So with JLPCB, what you can do is you can upload, you can go in and get quotes if you know the size, et cetera, you can get a quote. You can also do an upload. Um, you can add your Gerber files. So the way that you do that is, let's go over here. By the way, most of the manufacturers, if you were to type in JLCPCB, or PCB way or whatever you want to use and type in KiCad Gerber they will give you instructions how to generate here we go on five how to generate drill files and Gerber files so they go through and they give you all the steps that you need to do this so it's not difficult so I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at that basically you do a plot you choose the layers you follow the instructions on the previous page you create a directory, which is your Gerber files, and then you zip that directory. So if I go into here, here's Gerber, and I zipped them. Basically, I just took these files, boom, zipped them into that. So now, let's actually go upload that. Uh, let's go back one, let's add them. Now, I've already done this. In fact, I've already ordered them. So let's go to that project directory. Uh, projects, this one, KiCad, Gerber, Gerber Zip. So 
I haven't even logged in, by the way. So you can do this and play around. You don't have to create an account. You log in and you give it, a, give it some test files or this file or whatever it is you want to do. And there we go. That's our PCB that we've designed. Look what it's telling me. Uh, $9.70. I think that's for five. Yes, quantity of five. It's a two-layered board. These are the dimensions. Uh, what color do you want it? You know, I think I ordered mine red. So there you go. Um, how much copper? All these things you can just, as you're learning, just use the default. Um, and when you add shipping, here's DHL shipping. Um, you know, what are we looking at? $22, $23 or something like that. And... JC, JLC PCB is pretty good about uh, getting it manufactured. It normally takes a day to two days for the entire manufacturing process. And then it takes three to four business days for DHL to get them to you. So it's, it's pretty quick. Well, look what I got in the mail. Package from DHL. That would be my PCB boards from JLC PCB. So let's open this thing up and take a look at what we got. We're expecting these are the boards uh, for the model rocket controller. Christmas morning, tearing open a package. Nicely packaged, as is typical. I think I mentioned I've made a handful of uh, PCBs with them before. So let's open this up. Okay, red, yep. Okay, yep. Nothing else in the box. Sometimes they throw in a gifty or two. Uh, like a bookmark. I think I've gotten a pen or pencil from them before. Okay. All right. So I ordered five, which was the default quantity. I think it was, like I told you guys, it was like nine and some change. Doesn't really say here. So let's take a look at these. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let me grab a pair of glasses. Mounting holes are there. It's really done up like this. The Nano. Uh, yeah. They put their number down there. Back looks good. Okay, so these boards look pretty good. I'm happy with them. Uh, I've actually already started uh, putting some of them together and filming it. Uh, with that being said, I'm not certain how many videos will be in this series because I'm trying to limit them between 15 and 20 minutes each. Um, and I don't want to go through the entire build process. I just want to show you key pieces of information. So I'm trying to make these videos uh, enjoyable. Um, so anyway, with that, we'll see how many videos we get. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.